Thank you, Brother Freddie. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Enjoy that. Holler, amen. amen. That was a, just amazing. Amazing. Thank God for that. Praise God, kids. That's good. We got that parable right there about that beast and that dirt there. And you know, the guy said, he took out two pence. That's 2,000 years. And he said, when I come back, I'll pay whatever else is owed. I'll take care of that too. James chapter 5. We're going to look here tonight. I had this on my heart all evening. I just have Freddie just finish this thing out, but I'm just going to tack on a little something here at the very end here this evening. I felt like the Lord wanted me to. Good to have him, Brother Paul, Miss Summer, and uh, and Jeremiah, and then all these that come with them tonight. Uh, James chapter number five. Now count meeting starts two weeks from Wednesday night. And we got to get on the ball, y'all. We're behind. This thing here set us behind. But we get caught up, and we'll be ready. So uh, ladies, be talking about the food and everything. Um, we got a bunch of hamburger meat and stuff back there thawing out, but y'all got plans for that, I hope. Or it's just going to thaw and rot. Got it took care of? Let me know if we need more freezers or something tonight. James chapter 5, and I want to look at verse number 14. Quickly this evening. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another, not sins like the new Bible say, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. Look at this. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I'll stop right there tonight. Look at verse number 15, it said the prayer of faith. And then it describes it in verse 16, effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I want to give you a little thought tonight on the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. It grieves my heart tonight that we all, uh, people don't seem to pray like people used to pray. So you know, I have all the answers, and everybody knows everything, but nobody seems to want to get in that secret place and pray as saints of God in days of old. Jesus said in Luke 18, 1, Men ought always to pray. James 1, 5, But let him pray, let him ask in faith. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, Pray without ceasing. 1 John 5, 14, if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. First Chronicles 16, 11. Seek ye the Lord and His strength. Seek His face continually. Second Chronicles 7, 14. You all know it. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will heal their land. <whistles> you got the wrong one on here, boys. Something right there. Uh... uh so, Jeremiah 29, 22 and verse, uh, 29 verse 12. Then shall ye call upon me, and, uh, and we, uh, I will hear thee and answer thee. Job 22, 27. Thou shalt make thy prayer hit to him, and he shall hear thee. Proverbs 15, 8. The prayer of the upright is his delight. Well, Psalm 102, 17. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and I will not despise their prayer. We have, um, like very few churches uh, anymore, have an opportunity because of the bus ministry to reach and teach a lot of people. I'm talking about a lot. Our, our bus ministry literally probably talks face to face with more people in one week than probably any church in this in this uh, in this town. And I thank God that I'm not bragging. I'm just saying we have that opportunity. Now, what Jesus said, He said, "Let your words be with uh, with grace." Paul did, seasoned with salt. We need the prayer of faith. Let's examine what he called the prayer of faith just for a minute. I'm not going to preach a long sermon, just these three little things. Number one, it's effectual. Effectual. Effectual means successful in proving a desired effect. Producing the desired effect. You know why people don't pray? You know why? Because people don't think it does no good. You know, years ago, people used to pray. I used to preach in them mountain churches all the time when I was about uh, 
19 and 20, and I preached in revival. Lord, I preached in little churches up there in the mountain that, honest to goodness, wasn't no bigger than this from here to that wall there. I remember I preached a revival way up in Burnsville, up in the mountains that way, toward Boom, and the name of it was Rockdale Baptist. Rockdale. And that church was literally set on a gigantic big rock. And I know they only had like four row pews, like these, like two there on each side. And I remember them little traces like that. And I was just a young preacher and I was just starting out. And I wanted to learn everything I could learn and hear everything I could hear. And I remember standing out in the yard like this with my Bible and I was getting ready to go in. And then people come down out of the woods that way. Somebody come down out of, out of that way. Somebody come that way, driving up. You'd think there ain't going to be nobody there. There'd be an old woman come up out of the woods. An old woman come up there that night, that day, and she had her Bible like this right here, and she's a walking like this, and, and she had on an old dress way down to here, and she had her hair pulled back in a bun, and she looked up at me, and she said, young man, she said, I've been down there in the woods praying all day, that God, and I'm telling you, buddy, I felt like I was looking in the face of an angel. That done something, honest to goodness, you could see the glow on her. You ever seen the glow on somebody? Uh, Y'all remember Miss Kerr, she like that. I still communicate with her all the time. When I'm going somewhere to preach, I tell Miss Kerr. I said, Sister Kerr, pray for me. I got a few of them around the country. Like, Listen, that's not just a bunch of old people that, that don't know what they're doing, y'all. There's they something to that. There's something to them old time people that get in the woods and they pray. I heard uh, I heard uh, Mays Jackson tell old brother Mays, he'd tell him about this guy. And he said he's down there in Gastonia somewhere and his name was Harley. And he said, oh, Harley prayed all the time. You ever know him about like that? I mean, literally, prayed all the time. It's all he's done. I mean, he'd be going down the road, his lips would be moving. You think, you don't know who he's talking to? And Harley be praying like that. And he said, uh, he said, uh, he had Harley one time come preach a revival. And he said, uh, they, they come in there and he put him up in a motel room. And he got down there and prayed all day and prayed all night. He said, he went to get him out there. And, and that woman said, she said, that man maker's crazy. The one that cleans the rooms. She said, I went in the room. And she said, well, I heard him in there. Harley wasn't nobody in there but him. And she said, I went in the room to clean it. And he said, do you care if I pray while you're in here? And she was cleaning the room. He was over in the corner saying, oh, God, oh. Oh Lord, I mean that woman like that. <laughs> she about had a heart attack, and uh, and he he she's praying like that. And he said, "Oh Harley," he said, "I had Harley to come and preach," and he said, "I went and preached for him." And he said, "The first night it was tied in a banjo string." He said, "The second night, he said there wasn't nobody moved, nobody come to the altar. It was just locked down." He said, "I know something was wrong," and he said, "Their boy, their son was out on the out, out the coast of California down in a." A submarine uh, be, uh, waiting, trying to keep the Japanese from attacking us. And he said they was out there and they kept submarines out there all the time just in case the Japanese started trying to invade America. After Pearl Harbor they scared to death, you know, for a long time. And he said they was out there and that boy was in a submarine. And he said his wife was worried sick. And he said, I know what's wrong with this revival. He said, Harley, his wife, he said, my wife is tore all to pieces, worried about that boy over there. He said, I I don't know what to do about it. And uh, uh, he said, Harley said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going in the woods. And he said he went down in the woods the next morning, stayed all day long, all day. This was on Wednesday. They had revival Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. Stayed in the woods all day long. He came back up that evening. He said he came in just in time to get ready to go revival. It said he, uh, and he said, Woo! He said, My, I just heard from heaven. He said, Everything going to be all right. And, and they said, Now, now, Harley, he said, and he, he said, told his wife, He said, I heard from the Lord. He said, I, I got down there and I started praying. And he said, I prayed and I climbed up Jacob's ladder. And he said, I climbed up Jacob's ladder and I could see right over top of South Carolina and over top of Georgia and over top of Arkansas and over top of... And he said, I saw all the way over in California. And he said, I saw that ship coming in and I saw her boy. You know, he said, I'm telling you, honey, he's all right. And she said, uh, she said, now, Harley, please don't go to church and tell that. She said, them people will think we're crazy. Don't get up there. Sure enough, he got up there that night. He said, I heard from heaven and my boy's gonna be all right and you know what uh, they shouted he shouted around there for a while and his wife is skeptical and the next day they said they was getting ready to eat lunch brother may said and about that time he said 
Somebody knocked on the door. And he said, there's a man with a telegram. And he said, well, I, he said, are you Miss So-and-so? And had that woman a telegram. And he said, uh, Harley was in the other room. He said, that woman took that telegram. She come through the hallway shouting, Woo! Woo! He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. And she said, Harley, why ain't you shouting? He said, I got my shouting done yesterday. When I got that telegram uh, from over yonder on the other side. I'm going to tell you tonight, people. I think we still got a God that's on the throne. God's the same God he's always been. God ain't never changed. God ain't never got weak. We can still pray an effectual fervent prayer. You know what's wrong with us now? We don't pray, pray like we used to. That's right. I'm talking about people praying. Effectual, effectual, effectual. Did you know that in 1787 uh, that um, they, they were having their frame in the future of the United States, the Constitution of the United States, and it was on the verge of collapsing. They got in there and started arguing and fussing. Some of them on one way, some of them on the other way, and they said... They said that they got to fussing and arguing. And 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin, 81 years old, old man stood up and he said, Hey, he said, I've lived a long life. He said, I'm convinced God governs in the affairs of men. And he said, is it possible? He said, if, if, it's, if, it's, not, if it's not possible for a sparrow to fall without his, his uh, uh, notice, and notice, is it possible that an empire could rise without his aid? He said, no. And he said, let's pray. And they all got to praying, and the mood changed, and they got along with each other, and they formed the Constitution of the United States of America. And I'm going to tell you something, brother. If it wasn't for that Constitution, and that flag right there, and the grace of God, me and you couldn't meet in here like we are tonight. Hey, they can't do this in China, people. They can't do it in China. China sent us three wonderful gifts. Fentanyl, TikTok, and the Wuhan flu. And brother, every one of them just thrown three about destroyed our country. You do know that the kids in China can't watch TikTok. You know that, right? Not we're, Americans don't want dumb enough to let their kids watch something like that. That's right. And, and you know, something you hear me this evening, ladies and gentlemen, that changed the course of our country. And I fear tonight, I fear tonight, it seems like we don't listen no matter what happens. You know that all of my life, there'd never been a hurricane in this area. Never. I mean, it still wasn't like hurricane force winds, but that rain and stuff, is, it's, it's weird to me. It's weird. God knows what he's doing. God knows what he's doing. But it's mighty strange to me that that storm hit the smack dab buckle on the Bible belt. And I'm telling you people, I'm not a prophet. I ain't trying to say, but it, it might be God's trying to wake us up again. It might be God saying, hey, my people down there, hey, all y'all have been all that, that one circuit. Ralph Sexton said you can put a compass down on Asheville, North Carolina, and draw about a 300-mile circle around it right there, and there's more preachers come out of that one spot than any other place on planet Earth. We've been blessed here for so long. We've got camp meetings all summer long. I feel, and I tell you what, we've done. We've just got fat in the grace of God and sat down not with a blessed hand uh, to do nothing. Some of you people sitting right here tonight, you live right, you believe right, but you wouldn't walk across the street to witness your neighbor. You wouldn't give out a tract for your life depending on it. I'm telling you, God might be trying to talk to us. God might be speaking to us this time. I know Asheville's wicked. I know Asheville Cisco has gone the wrong way in the last few years. But brother, and God may be dealing with it. I don't know. I'm not God. I'm not calling that shot. But I remember when I first got saved, we used to go to Asheville and preach on the street on a regular basis, right in the middle of town. Right down there, in the, uh, Pritchard, Pritchard, not Preacher, Pritchard Park. Right there, a big square right in the middle of town. And there'd be old women out there shouting. Somebody bring a guitar and we'd sing a few songs. People bow down out there and get saved. You go to Asheville tonight, it's like Sodom and Gomorrah. And I always believed, years ago, I always believed that if God did send a revival to America, it'd be through Ralph Sexton Jr. Because God was you, he had a special kind of, a guy got a, some kind of special touch on him. I mean, and then God was using it. And I said, right there, if it comes, that'll be the way it'll come. I always thought that. And the devil saw that. And Ralph Sexton Sr. told me, 
years and years, 40 years ago. He said, Danny, don't let them take us away from you. He said, you people don't sell your land. Now, what did he, what did he, what did he care about where anybody said? He told them old people all over Iceland. He said, don't sell your land. Don't sell your land. I don't know what he's talking about. And sure enough, the pervs came from all over the world and converged on Iceland. And take it up and buying it, brother. And buying it. And they're trying to put the fire out. The devil hates the fire of God. And God's people have allowed it so. We pray for the storm victims. We pray for lost family members. We pray for our camp meeting coming up. We pray for our country. Our country. Do you realize this election coming up in November is probably the most important election in the history of the United States of America? Brother, we're facing a huge choice here in the next year. People who think a pre preacher should never mention politics are really showing their ignorance. Really, they are. I mean, how stupid can you get? Uh, Listen, hey, hey, listen, buddy. They ain't nothing off limits from up here if we got Bible to preach what we got back up. Nothing. Nothing. Hey, man, we'll preach on your coattail. We'll preach on your, your shoes. We'll, we'll preach on your habit. There ain't nothing off limits if that book says it. That book is against gay marriage. That book is against abortion. That book is against liberal lifestyle. That book is against liberalism. That book is against foreign religions. Ladies and gentlemen, our country tonight is in jeopardy if we don't pray. It ain't the school ain't going to save them, that's for sure. Lord, they're gone too. It's God's people, which are called by His name, shall humble themselves and pray. Now, how are we going to pray? I'm, I'm encouraging everybody here. We got, we got uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 17, 18 days till camp meeting. I encourage everybody here. You know, you know me. I believe you ought to pray and you ought to fast. Jesus did not say if you fast. He said when you fast. There's certain things that God works through prayer and fasting that you don't get done no other way. Spiritual battles. And I'm encouraging everybody here, you pick a day in these next two weeks. One day this week, if we're not careful, we'll let the storm and everything divert us from what? The camp meeting's coming, y'all. The camp meeting. The storm be old news by the time camp meeting gets here. We'll be, everybody going to be cleaned up. Electricity be on. We'll be back to normal. And I'll say, oh my goodness, I ain't prepared for the camp meeting. Just forget the storm for a little while and say, Lord, I want to pray and I want to fast. Dr. Alexander McLaren, uh, when he became a scholar, every morning from 9 to 10, he spent alone with God, read the Bible with his child, with, as a child, would lead a, would lead a letter from his father. He said he read the Bible just like a kid would read a letter from their dad. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, they prayed. Them old guys prayed. George Whitfield prayed this prayer. Lord, give me souls or take my soul. Henry Martin, the famous missionary to India, said, here, let me burn out for God. That's a good one. David Brainerd, uh, took the North American Indian, said, Lord, I dedicate myself to thee. I desire nothing else. I desire nothing more. D.L. Moody said, here's my heart, an empty vessel. Fill it with your grace. Martin Luther said, do thou, my God, stand by me. Like the kids are singing a minute ago. All the world's wisdom and reason, thou true eternal God, stand by me. Elijah called down fire from heaven. Paul and Silas prayed at midnight. And the jail shook, brother. And had the jailhouse rocked for Elvis. Got off his baby formula. Abraham prayed for God to have mercy on Sodom. If there had just been ten righteous there, God would have spared them city. And I tell you something else. There's still a lot of people around here that love God. And that's probably the only thing that's held the wrath of God off of the United States of America. But brother, when we're gone, you better hide and get out of the way. Because all hell's going to break loose right now while we got to change. Let's pray. David prayed for God to reveal his king's dream. And Daniel did rather. Moses prayed for God to spare them and God did. Now listen. There's a man by the name of Jimmy Mada who was a devout Hindu raised in Hinduism. And somehow or another over in Leicester, England got saved. And, and Jimmy got saved and when he found out he got saved his family were, was enraged. They absolutely, 
They absolutely took a fit. They kicked him out of the house. They disowned him for denying Hinduism. And they asked him, they said, which God are you talking about? He said, I'm talking about God the Father of Jesus Christ that died on the cross. They kicked him out of the house. They threw him out. His brother, Jay, prayed that their God would kill Jimmy. They hated him. Jay, his brother, was a very brilliant man. And he was uh, very, very smart, book learning. And he's working on uh, his degree in London and a medical degree from university. He disowned his brother and he said, uh, Jimmy told Jay, he said, Jay, if you ever get desperate and ain't got nobody to call on, Jesus is there for you. Boy, he got mad. He told Jimmy to get lost, never to speak to him again. And Jimmy started praying. Now, here's what to do if you got a family member that's hard to witness to. He wouldn't listen to him. You got something like that? I got something like that? Somebody really hard. He said, I'll tell you what, you might not open the door when I come, but you can't stop my prayers from going in there. And you know what Jimmy prayed? He said, God, visit him with scary, scary, with dreams. And sure enough, sure enough, Jay started having nightmares. And a blinding light came through the ceiling. And three fiery creatures appeared in his bedroom. And blew a trumpet. And it was the end of the world. And a fourth creature appeared. And Jimmy was in it. And he had like eyes of fire. And he was reaching out. He woke up and he's numb. And he started getting shaky. And he, and he got a Bible. And Jimmy called the next day and said, Jake, you want me to send you a Bible? And he hung up on him. He didn't know about them dreams. He finally got a Bible. And he finally got so scared he said, all right, I'm going to seek it out. And he got in a Bible and two years searched it out. And when he got through, he figured out that it was true and got saved and became a missionary to Glasgow and a preacher. That old boy, you know why? The prayers of his brother, Jimmy. Now look, you got somebody that won't, your family that won't come to church? You say, every time I invite them, they get mad. Here's what you do. Lord, let them, give them nightmares. God, scare the devil out of them. Lord, let them wake up trembling. You believe that works? It did for him. It did for him. Effectual. You know what fervent means? Fervent means passionate. Intense. I've always wondered, I've always felt guilty about this, uh, uh, Brother Freddie, Paul. I've always felt guilty. The Bible said when Jesus there in the Garden of Gethsemane, his sweat became as great drops of blood. Sweat was dripping him as blood drips. And it's cold that night. They had to build a fire to stay warm. However Jesus was praying, people made him sweat on a cold night. How long has it been since we got that passionate in our prayer? You remember them all-night prayer meetings we used to have? Lord, have mercy. Every Friday, I don't see how we did it. Every Friday night, like clockwork. They'd meet at church about 10 o'clock at night and stay till 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And, and it, you know, I remember praying and praying. And I'd say, Lord, help. Lord, help. Oh, Lord, help. <laughs> really, <laughs> one guy told me one time, he said, Brother Danny, I'm sorry. He said, I didn't know what I said. He said, I was up there saying, Lord, bless Brother Danny. Praise his holy name. <laughs> I said, no, you know what? You say, well, see there, that kind of praying don't do no good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I believe a lot of time the Lord looked down there and our words didn't make sense and we was trying to fight to stay awake and God said, you know what? I know your heart. I know your heart. I'm so glad God knows our heart. Hey, I'm glad he knows our heart, brother. I went to, I went to sleep praying. Said the same thing over and over and over and over. And I remember about 5 o'clock in the morning, the boys say, well, we're going to truck stop getting breakfast. I said, y'all crazy. I'm going, I'm going to bed. Uh, you know, we got to piss in after a while. And I said, you're a bunch of nuts, man. I mean, I sit and pray, but I ain't going to eat breakfast 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but they, they used to do that. You know what I believe God did? I believe him many, 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 many a time. God looked down. He saw a bunch of young men and yet many times young ladies laying on their face one, two, three o'clock in the morning at the house of God. And God looked down and he said, you know what? I'm just going to bless that bunch of kids down there. I'm going to bless them. That is fervent. That is fervent. That's how you get your prayers answered, y'all. How long has it been since you wrestled in prayer? I don't know what Jesus was doing. 
Probably just agonizing. <laughs> My father, father, let this cup pass from me. Maybe, I don't know, whatever it done, whatever he's doing made him sweat on a cold night. Fervent. Fervent. Righteous man availeth much. And then it said, it availeth much. The greatest missionary of all time prayed. John Wesley, two hours a day. David Brainerd lived on his knees. Died at 29 years old. He fell in love with a young lady when he was probably in his early 20s, Jonathan Edwards' daughter. And he really wanted to marry her. And he said, I can't take you up there. The Indians will kill you, steal you in a heartbeat. Snow that deep, way up in New England. Ain't no roads, ain't no motels. There ain't no, no mission board to support him that I know of. Maybe some helped a little bit. And he took off up there. Couldn't even speak their language. And David Brainerd led that horse through the snow, brother, and preached them Indians. And I read in his diary where it said, uh, he would write and he'd say, there seemed to be a spirit of earnestness among the tribal uh, chiefs today in the Indians. And he'd preach, and they couldn't even understand him. Sometimes you see tears start coming down their cheeks. You know who does that? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost does. Listen, I ain't trying to sound spooky or nothing, but the Holy Ghost has to do the work if it gets done. Amen. And we ought to pray like it all depends on us and trust God like it all depends on Him. That's the best way to live. The Calvinists go one way and the backslid Baptists go the other way. I'm telling you, we ought to pray like it all depends on us and, and trust God like it all depends on Him. David Brainerd prayed. They said he'd get down out there and pray, pray in snow and there'd be like rose petals on the snow, the little bits of his lungs. He's coughing up, spitting up on that snow or he's sick. And he never did get to marry that girl. Never did. Died when he was 29. Pray and hide. Everybody here ought to read that story of John Hyde. They called him Pray and Hide. Who lived on his knees and literally had grooves in a wood floor where his knees had stayed, where he stayed on his knees at night. They said at one meeting in India, he was responsible for a meeting that caused 100,000 people to be saved by the grace of God. They said, John Hyde literally prayed himself to death. I'll tell you this, I'm through. I've told you before, but a great story. God still do stuff like that? Percy Ray. Old Dr. Percy Ray. Got up down there at Camp Zion. I've, I've been down there at Camp Zion in its heyday, man. They used to have, I mean, there'd be 1,500 people in there, y'all. Thousand of them up shouting at the same time. And I mean, the glory was down there. A lot of great preachers. Stuff. Ed Maccabee was my mentor. I always, uh, Brother Freddie's talking about North Carolina preachers. I, every, a lot of places I'd go, they say, Brother Danny, uh, they used to ask us, they'd say, how do you have a balance? They said, uh, y'all's church are King James Bible believers, and you believe the Bible right. But you have a bus ministry. And a lot of them that have the bus ministry don't believe right. And a lot of them that believe right don't have a bus ministry. And they said, y'all got it all right here together. And my answer is always the same. Well, if you learn how to build a church, listen to Jack Hiles and them guys. You want to have a crowd? That's a, this and that. I said, you want, to learn, you want to learn the Bible? Listen to Dr. Ruckman. He's by far, by far, the greatest Bible teacher that this country's ever seen. They ain't even nobody a close second. That's right. I say what you want to. Uh, it's true. And I said, you want to learn how to preach? Listen to Ed McAbee and the old mountain preachers. And you wrap it all together and put it in one, brother. And right back, put the hammer down. And that's what we need in church tonight. A balance. A Bible preaching. And prayer. Like it all depends on us or God. And work. Like it all depends on us. Percy Ray looked up and he said, he talked like this. You can still listen to him on the internet. He said, we ain't got nothing to eat. We ain't got nothing to eat. Up here. And he said, we're out of chicken. He said, we ain't got no meat. He said, we got vegetables, we got potatoes. And they had a thousand people there and no way to feed them. He said, we're out. Y'all pray. And they prayed, God, send us some. Send us some. And he, uh, uh, Brother Wayne, I think Brother Wayne was there. Eyewitness. It's a true story, brother. Like Wendy Bagwell with my hand up. And you know what? He said, uh, the guy come in the office where the secretary was, and he said, ma'am, 
Can I use your telephone? She said, you sure can. He said, uh, she, he said, she said, what's wrong? He said, I need to call my boss man. He said, I drive a truck for this company out here. Well, and he said, uh, my truck's broke down out here, and I think transmission's out of it, so I'm going to have to have it towed. And it's going to take them several hours to get here. And uh, he said, I just got stuck. She said, you're more than welcome. You just sit right here. He said, ma'am, uh, y'all wouldn't need no chicken, do you? He said, I got a whole truck full of it, full out there, and it's, it's thawing out, and we're going to have to throw it away. Woo! He said, he said uh, we're going to throw it away. Nobody can you. She said, I believe we can. She went and told Dr. Ray, said that the man out front uh, broke down in a chicken truck and got a whole truckload. He's going to give it. They brought him in there, brother, and had chicken and had a big dinner and shouted the victory. You say, that was an accident. No, that old man knew. He knew he, he knew how to get in touch with, with God Almighty. He knew how to pray. He knew, you say, well, preacher, that was a long time ago. Look, he's the same God now. Our problem is your cell phone. Your cell phone is your biggest enemy. A lot of you people in here tonight. Say amen right there. I know preachers that never would have a TV, but now they got the internet. <laughs> Listen, TV couldn't hold a lot to that daggone YouTube and tick all that messes on you on the internet. Amen. I got a phone, it's it's around here somewhere. I don't bring it in here. Uh, but I'm gonna tell you something, brother. We we need to get back on our knees. We need to get back to God. We need, you reckon God might be trying to talk to this part of the country? We need to pray. Now, girls, get that song and keep praying. And I want us tonight to give this thing some thought. I just want to give you a little encouragement. Let's get back on our knees. Maybe we'll have a, an all-night prayer meeting here before the camp meeting. we got two and a half weeks. Maybe you can pick out a day and fast. Good time fasting. You can't cook nothing. No way. I cooked, I cooked stuff on the grill. Had a pot of vegetables on the grill last night. And some stuff we found. I got some stuff about to throw out. We were about ready to throw away. And... Uh, the pot was so hot I couldn't pick it up. <laughs> had to get a rag. We had a good meal. Picked it from my mother-in-law back there. Miss B, she had to have something to eat. And we wanted to make sure she did. And we had a good time. But you know what? Good time to fast. You don't have to get the kids ready for school tomorrow. There ain't no school. Some of you don't have to go to work. You can't do your stuff. Everything's closed. You reckon God might be trying to talk to us a little bit? I feel like he is. I feel like he is. Let's stand. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man.